Hi, boys and girls, welcome back. Today we're going to be representing hundreds as fractions and decimals. We learned yesterday about tenths. Now we're moving up to our next place in the place value chart into the hundredths. So let's start out with our vocabulary term. A hundredth is one of 100 equal sized parts. In a decimal, the first digit to the right of the decimal point is the number in the tenths place. That's what we learned about yesterday. But now the second digit to the right of the number is the hundredths. Let's look at some examples. If I have this fraction, it's written 65 hundredths. That means there's 65 pieces out of 100 can be illustrated in a hundreds model. Notice when I do this, you could go and count every single one of these blocks, or I remember one whole line would equal 10. So I can count by tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and then count on by one, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65. That would make 65 one hundredths. Notice when I fill in my hundreds um, model, I'm going to start all the way to the left and fill in 10 at a time. And then when I have filled in all my tenths, then I will start at the top right next to the final tenth and start at the top coloring down what I need to do. That way it keeps it all in a nice neat order and it's not all over the place. We want to keep our hundreds models very nice and neat so they're easy to read. Okay, so now this, as if I write it in the place value, I'm going to have no ones because I do not have a single whole box filled in. So zero ones. I have my decimal point to the right of the ones place. Tenths, remember we counted by tenths, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So that means I have six tenths and then I have five hundredths. Notice that there's a TH tenths, it's not tens, it's tenths. And there's a TH for hundredths, it's not hundreds, it's hundredths. So when we have decimal point, points, or we're talking about the decimal point part of our place value, we need to make sure we add the th to the tenths and to the hundredths. Okay, therefore I now know that I have six tenths and five hundredths. If I was going to write this as a decimal, I would write zero and sixty-five hundredths. Here's another example that you might come across. In this example we have seven hundredths. So when I do my place value, I do not have any tenths. I only have seven pieces I'm going to color down. Remember, we looked at this before when it was seven tenths. If it was seven tenths, I would have seven rows of 10, but it's not tenths, it's hundredths. I like to think of the difference of these thinking about money. If I had seven tenths, that means I would have seven dimes. Seven dimes would be equal to 70 cents. But if I have seven hundredths, that's like having seven pennies. Seven pennies is equal to seven cents or seven hundredths. There's the difference in those. Let's look at it with our place value chart. In our place value chart, again, we have no number in our ones place. We have a decimal point. Then we have no number, zero needs to hold the place for our tenths place. And a seven in the hundreds place. The biggest mistake I see kids making is not putting the zero for the tenths place because again we have no tenths. So now we have zero tenths and seven hundredths. As a decimal it would be written zero and zero seven hundredths. We would say it is zero and seven hundredths. But do not forget that zero placeholder for the tenths place. That's a very common mistake that many students make. Here's another example that we have. In this example, I have one hole that is fully colored in, and then I have a fractional part that's partially colored in. I'm going to write this. This is going to need to be a mixed number. Remember, we talked about that yesterday. So I know I'm going to have one whole. Then I'm going to start by counting by tens. 10, 20, 30. 
then counting on 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. So I have one whole and 39 hundredths. So as a decimal, I would write one, a decimal point, and then 39. As a fraction, I would write one whole and 39 hundredths. I hope that you were able to find this very helpful. Please click like below and subscribe for more videos from the Math uh, Maniac. Have a great day.